What's up everyone? My name is Jared and I'm from TechWorks. And so you just bought yourself a shiny new Android phone and you're looking to get into the smartwatch scene. Well, where do you start? There is a ton of brands going around for Android, whether it be from the big guys like Samsung or Huawei to some more fitness band sort of styles like Fitbit, Garmin, and pretty much everything in between, even watch brands like Skagen. Uh, Fossil, Michael Kors, they all have their own take on the smartwatch and what it should and shouldn't be, but what really is the best, what is the most complete. So here comes the Samsung Gear S3. Now this is by no means a new device. This actually was released in 2016, but I still think today this might be your best choice and let me tell you why. So this is the Galaxy Gear S3 Frontier Edition. So there really wasn't much to the unboxing of it. You have your box in there. You have your little charging stand, which I don't currently have. You have some manuals. You have a uh, smaller size strap. And you also have your information. I didn't show it. It really is not that an exciting of a process. But the real meat and potatoes is the watch. So... First looks, you know, you obviously you can change your watch face depending on if you like it or not. But anyway, this is what you have. You have what looks like a pretty normal watch. Uh, you have a stainless steel case with your heart rate sensor at the bottom. You have two little buttons that have little uh, knurling on the side, all metal buttons. You have nothing here on the uh, left side, three little speaker holes right down there. And then you have the face. So if you couldn't tell, this is a large watch. So for reference, I have my 42 millimeter Apple watch right here sitting next to me. And you know, it's, it's not huge to the point of ungodly, but it's round versus square. So that might be one problem for people who might have smaller wrists. Secondly, so this watch is certainly geared more towards men. And I say that just because it has this rugged vibe. You know, it has a thick, at least when you get it, a thick rubber strap and a pretty chunky face. Uh, it's not so much a flat tire design like you'd see in the Moto Sport watches that were around a few years ago. But it, it, it looks like, a friend of mine said it, it looks like a metal G-Shock compared to uh, certain watch faces you put on it. And while that's good for someone like me, uh, it might not be good for everybody. So I definitely know that, and Samsung does have a couple more watches. They have the S3 Sport, which was released last year, and they also have the S3 Classic, which I would say is more of a dressier, fancier style of watch. But this is the Frontier, this is the Rugged, this is the Manly watch. And seeing that I'm a man, um, this, is, this is what I picked out to look at. So the biggest difference, I would say, between the smartwatches that I've used is the idea of this rotating bezel. So this is how you navigate the OS. You rotate it, you can create reminders, you have your activities. So these are all things that I put on, your step goals. You also have the altimeter and barometer. So if you went hiking and things of that nature, that's super handy. Your music player, uh, quick, health settings so last time I just went running so that I had my health heart rate from there my steps my calories and floors climbed um, you have activities that you like so you can add up to four I have running walking treadmill and elliptical and quick settings and you can add a whole bunch of different widgets uh, really and if you go the other way you have like I received the text that's another notification on my phone Another notification was my step count, and you can hit clear all, and there you go. So these two buttons on the side, the top one is your back, so if you're in your notifications, you hit back, or if you're in any menu, say you go to uh, heart rate, for example, it'll show your week's heart rate, and you hit the bottom, it takes you right to home. And you can change your watch face to whatever you like, you kind of hard press or hold on the face, and you can scroll through, and there's a ton 
whether you buy them, download them. Uh, Samsung has a bunch pre-installed. I like this one. It's kind of a uh, unique, modern, convenient watch face. It has all your information. It has your steps, your distance, your calories, flights if you did them, your goal indicator, battery percentage, heart rate, and you know all the essentials. The real cool thing about this watch compared to say the Apple Watch is that this is just, these are just normal bands. So you can go on Amazon, pick any 22 millimeter band and it should fit this watch. Uh, kind of has the quick little disconnect pins, you pull it to the side, your band will come out. So that gives you a thousand and one options online to pick out for bands. Silicone, metal, cloth, whatever can fit a 22 millimeter, uh, it'll fit this compared to you can have a lot of options for Apple Watch if you want to stray away from the official bands, but then again, they're not always super great quality. So there's certainly that. Uh, really, the biggest difference that I would say is, is just the whole terms of how, this, how you interact with this watch. So if you've watched my previous videos, you would know that my biggest and most favorite thing about the Apple ecosystem was truly the Apple Watch because... I am into health and, and counting my steps and runs and all that stuff. And I like having that on my wrist to check my steps, all that information. And when I decided a few days ago to really uh, put my foot in the door with the Galaxy S9 Plus, I thought to myself, shoot, well, now I can't really use my Apple Watch uh, to get my text, all that crazy stuff because, you know, I'm not really using the iPhone as my, my go to right now. So I figured I might as well do this. And this watch is two years old and they are looking and they're in development of a new Gear S4, which probably will be out this year. Um, I think what's really unique is that unfortunately Samsung isn't great with updates, with their flagships even, but they have managed to keep this updated to the latest version of Tizen because this isn't even Wear OS. This is not Google where OS, things like Huawei's devices and a lot of the other smartwatches in the Android Scape use, this is Samsung's own software. And it actually runs really, really smoothly. Uh, you get a notification very similar to on, on iPhone and, and Apple Watch, comes up on your screen, you can rotate, you'll see your notifications, you can roll it down and select something to send. You can check your weather. I mean. All of this is very similar to how you would do it. The big difference is how you would interact with it. You also have, whether you like it or not, being this is a, a slightly older device, you have S-Voice, which anyone who had a Samsung pre-S8 uh, knows the bane of everyone's existence, S-Voice, because it was just a useless, uh, very difficult and frustrating feature that Samsung decided to include and keep including. And not that Bixby is much better, but at least now we have Google Assistant to help us get us through our tasks versus having to rely. But you do have that. So the real difference of the two watches is really how you interact. So you have, the Apple Watch has the digital crown, right? That's how you activate everything. You press it, you roll it, you scroll it. That's basically how it works with just about everything. Um, with this, you have the dial, um, which I, I, I've only been using it for a little while now, but I find it easier to use in my everyday for one reason. So for example, today when I was, when I was on my run, um, I was trying to change songs, which you can do from the watch, just very similar to, to Apple Watch. And you can also look at your run information. So while I was doing that, uh, to get to that screen while I was running, all I had to do was roll over one screen and I was at my music. I could hit, you know, stop, start, play, pause, whatever, and just roll this way, get back to my, my run statistics, all that information. Now, I know people will say, well, it's just as easy with Apple Watch. Well, when I tend to use an, uh, I have used this at the gym plenty of times. I go, I, I have my music playing if I'm say lifting weights or, or whatnot, and I have my music up and I wanna see something else. Well, now I gotta 
It's also very easy to change your watch face. Um, I have to try to hit the digital crown or hit back, scroll through my, uh, my things real fast and find what I was last at, then go back and go to where I want to be, whether that be workout, music, whatever. It is, and I, you know, this is being petty and it's slightly more convenient to just roll your dial and be like, oh, there's my run and bam, there's my music or, or wherever you are in the menu. So that, so there is that, and I do like that. The second thing is the build quality of this is heavy, right? Even take the strap out of it, which is, you know, strap is fine, silicone strap. You know, it's not gonna, it's not revolutionary design or anything, but the, the actual watch face is heavy. And the biggest difference is the heft between these two watches. So today, wearing it for really my first full day, I felt this on my wrist. I'm like, yep, I definitely have a watch on. And I am used to big watches, so that's really not a huge problem for me. But I knew it was there. I didn't want to bump it into things, anything like that. Second, which is which I personally think is nicer, your screen is just ever so slightly recessed underneath that dial. Meaning, for example, this, I put a little screen protector on it because I always bumped it in the stuff. Your glass is curved right to the top. And I really did not like how a lot of the cases look on the Apple Watch. I think they just make it look farty. Um, this is just a little bit recessed, so it's gonna have that much of a little bit harder time touching the screen. So yeah, and you could probably fit a little screen protector on top of there and you wouldn't even know that you had one just to keep it that extra little bit of nice. And say you don't wanna use the digital or the, uh, the dial, you can actually just swipe it with your finger if you'd rather do that. So there's a lot of ways to interact with it. Next thing we'll talk about is you can use this with more than just a Samsung phone. So obviously your best experience is going to come when you pair it with a Galaxy or a Note phone because you have things like S Health is already in here, Gear is already in here, Samsung Pay, all of that's already on your phone. It's going to seam seamlessly carry over to your watch without really much difference whatsoever. But it gives you the flexibility to say, all right, for example, I love the Pixel phones, and at least right now, I would rather use the S9 Plus than the Pixel. But say I wanna test out Android P tomorrow. Just say that happens. I can easily repair this with my Pixel and basically have the same feature set. The things I won't have would be um, S Voice, which, Again, not too broken up about. And a few little things with the ease of connectivity. But other than that, you're, you'll have your full experience. I can still use Samsung Pay on this Gear S3 if I'm using a OnePlus device or a Pixel or whatever. It doesn't matter. I can still, I can still use it, which is great. I love Samsung Pay. I even like it better than Apple Pay because it has more uses in more places. Places that don't even know can accept Samsung Pay sometimes can, and it just blows their mind. We're like, no, that's not gonna work. And you just, boop, and it does. So that's awesome. You can pair it with other, all you gotta do is install the gear manager, which is just like you were buying a Fitbit and you gotta install the Fitbit app. It's the same way, you just install that, it connects, updates, all of that can happen from any Android device and this will even work with iPhones. Now, at that stage, the feature set is gonna be much more limited because there is no S Health on your iPhone. There is no S Voice. There, a lot of the apps will not carry over and you won't get as great of an experience than anything else. So I'm sure a lot of people at this point are saying, well, why am I reviewing a two-year-old or almost two-year-old watch when there is newer and I guess more updated watches out there. Well, a couple of reasons. This, what it does, and it's pretty obvious about what it does, it does very well. You know, the, the quality is there, it is a Samsung, so people, you know, think of that name just as they think of Apple, so that might be a selling point for some individuals. Comes with everything, you have, Everything you wanna do, you wanna to reply to messages, you wanna go for a hike, you wanna go run, you wanna create reminders, calendar events. You can add up to 15 widgets on this screen. 
So for example, I could do another alarm, shortcuts, a full calendar, quick contacts, news, uh, how much coffee I've drank. So they have a lot of features with S Health. Um, and it just keeps going on and on. Water intake, world clock, and it just keeps going. I think personally, this is one of the better built watches. I know I had the Moto 360 Sport and that watch really did not feel like it was worth anything. It, it didn't, it felt very flimsy, plastic buttons, donut, you know, flat donut design, and it just didn't, it didn't feel quality. I mean, if I say I was going out from work and say I just had a nice pair of jeans on, a nice shirt, jacket, whatever, I could take it off this digital face very quickly and just say, oh, I'm gonna go out? All right, let me just um, make it look a little more normal. And at first glance, it even has a reflection when you turn it. And that's not a reflection from my window because I'll cover it with my hand. That's on the screen. People could think this was a chronograph watch at first glance. I mean, it has certainly has the aesthetic. This also has an always on display mode so that if you don't want to have it go completely dark when you're not wearing it, it'll dim and some watches have a different face or some watch faces have a secondary face which it uses as its always on face and some will just go dim and I think because I'm not having it on my wrist it just went dark or you can leave it just like Apple Watch and have it raised awake or you know scroll or hit a button to wake to see what you got going on. So I would still highly recommend it right now it is on sale for around 270 US dollars uh I think it is a great device going forward. They have been very good about updates now. I don't know what will happen if the S4 version of this comes out. I don't know how that will play into it, but I do know one thing is that this will work with pretty much every Android phone right now. It will work with probably every Android phone going forward for quite a substantial amount of time. It has basically every feature you would want the one downside being that this specific version probably doesn't cater to the ladies that much, but they do have versions which have the same software set on them, like the Classic and the Sport, which ladies might like a little bit better than this chunky, uh, rugged looking watch. This is waterproof. It's IP68 rated, um, dirt dust shock, all that stuff. It, you know, it is protected. You can go swimming with it just like you can the Gen 3. I'm not really saying that this is so much a, uh, a step up from an Apple Watch, but I think it's a very, very comparable alternative in the Android space. So anyway, that was my uh, little, I guess, plug, uh, my recommendation about the S3 Frontier Edition, how I like it, how this has kind of filled my void of the Apple Watch need uh, since I've really taken on the Samsung S9 Plus as my daily driver. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for watching. Check out more videos in the description below, and we will see you in the next one.